Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Uncharted, The Lost Legacy, Crushing Difficulty Walkthrough, and this is Chapter 9, also known as End of the Line. And this is the final chapter of the game, people. And in my opinion, absolutely the most fun chapter. This is high octane from start to finish. And we start the chapter, remember? Once again, a little throwback to Uncharted 4, we're chasing a train in Uncharted 4, I think it was a convoy or something like that, but we're chasing a train in our jeep and we're gonna get rushed by a bunch of motorcycles. And once again, trophy time people, if you ram 10 motorcycles and get them to explode, you will get uh, another trophy, which I can't remember the name of. But this section of the game, or this section of the level, is very easy. On crushing, I think... Yeah, I did this first try. You more or less cannot fail this. As long as you stay mobile, which is quite easy in a car, and you don't start crashing into trees and taking on too much damage, you shouldn't have any problems at all getting through this first area. There are quite a few paths going through it. Feel free to skid around as you please. Nadine and Sam will do their best to help you. And here we have the train coming up. And remember, as I mentioned in a previous video, that they are bonding. They, this is a little subtle thing. Even though she could get on board herself, she accepts uh, Nadine's help to get up there. And now we're going into phase two. This is where the chapter gets a little bit hey, harder. Did you catch where they put that giant crate? If you're patient yeah, right, and you take your time, I, uh, you can stealth this. Probably it's very hard to do on crushing. I did a few attempts at it. Realized that it was more effort than reward. So I decided to hell with it and went in guns blazing. And you get two weapons going into this... Uh, into this chapter. You get this amazing assault rifle and you also have my favorite gun in the whole game. Can you guess which one it is? Yes, it's the Desert Eagle and you have 12 bullets for it. 12! I can change the world with 12 bullets in a Desert Eagle. No I can't, but I can get through most of this chapter. And I think when you get over to the next train cart is where you're gonna face off against the first batch of enemies. In this first area there are no enemies, feel free to progress as fast as, as you please. Take in the scenery, enjoy the train ride. I like riding trains actually. Oh, shit. I used to uh, ride a train to work. Well, we still have I was the of working in the next city, the closest or the fastest way for me to get to work was riding a train, so it was quite comfortable every morning. Spent about 10 minutes on it, went for two stops, so very quick. But anyway, here are a bunch of enemies. One of them is gonna come in here, and luckily for me, Nadine stealth takes him. Stealth kills him. And there is something that is a bit weird. The enemy AI cannot see your friends unless they have spotted you. They are completely invisible. When I tried to do the same thing and do a stealth takedown, everyone saw it and started shooting at me. I thought that was... That was very unfair of them. Because if Nadine is, Im is invisible, I want to be invisible as well. And in that red crate, there is a propane tank. Which I wasn't aware of until I threw in that grenade. But that is gonna kick things off. Now everyone knows we're here and nobody wants us here. So now we're gonna put our weapons to good use. There is a heavy. I think he will try to advance on you on this train cart. I was going for jump. I was. My plan was to jump across that gap. Didn't work too well, so I'm gonna have to backtrack and try again. But the key to success in this mission. Ah, here comes the heavy. The key to success in this mission, as in most fighting sequences in this game, is to not rush. Choose those opportune moments, use the cover as best you can. None of these vents are breakable, so you are completely safe behind them. 
And I don't think that enemies are so happy about throwing grenades at you in this chapter as they are in the other ones. And also, since the train is moving, I think the grenade can slide off. If they manage to pull up a grenade. And here comes a sniper. That sniper can be such a pain in the ass because he has a tendency to fall back when you get too close. So he will move further up the train. So take him out as fast as you can. Incoming. Because there are a few checkpoints in this level but Shit. they are spaced quite far Roger. apart. Or at least the, f the first checkpoint is quite a bit into it. I think you have to move up. I think you have to move up over to the second flatbed after this or something. And this is a bit awkward position to be in because now I have guys on motorcycles riding at the side of the train. Shooting at me and I have a sniper in a cart further up. And I have some guys on the roof. And of course we're in a curve so I can't hit that guy. But that is something I actually enjoy about this uh, about this chapter and also the train sequence in Uncharted 2. That is also not a great mission. The fact that the train is moving and the railing isn't straight adds an extra adds an extra mechanic or an extra dimension to the combat because you can put yourself in a position where you can just barely see the enemy and he cannot see you just due to the geography change. The backside of that coin is the fact that sometimes it can be very frustrating because <laughs> the fact that the train is moving, it's bumping a little bit up and down and it's moving side to side can throw off your aim. Your aim will start swaying a little bit and since the train is moving, it will move your target back and forth, so... But all in all, I think it's really fun. And this is actually the chapter I... When I edited this, I mentioned in a previous video that I thought that I ran out of ammo. And that is true, actually. Because there is a mechanic in this uh, chapter that we are gonna see a little bit further in. Where you jump over to a jeep. And that is extremely broken and it is so empowering it's ridiculous. It's amazing riding in the jeeps and I'm gonna show you just how amazing it is because I advanced for almost half this level through jeeps without having a bullet to my name and no one can touch me. And I think that flatbed is the checkpoint, or is the first checkpoint. But I may be wrong, I'm not quite sure. Let's see. Because when I played through this chapter on normal, I stealthed through almost this entire... almost through this entire chapter. All the parts I could stealth, I stealthed. But as I've mentioned before, the enemies are so attentive on crushing, so it's borderline impossible to do it. Which it should be on, uh, on the highest difficulty. It should be very hard. Maybe not as hard as it is in some instances of this game. Because if stealth is supposed to be a factor in it, then it should work on all difficulties. Am I right? Or am I wrong? Because that is the problem at times. That it feels like crushing is designed in such a way so it doesn't allow stealth. Even if you're extremely patient, you wait for those opportune moments, you're sitting in a fucking bush for 15 minutes, just waiting to get a good patrol pattern. The very second you move, sometimes the enemy spot you. Maybe that's just me not being as good at stealth, the stealth approach as I think. But that's how I feel about it anyway. But anyway, we're moving up. And uh, no, I think I made a little mistake. We're not at checkpoint yet. No, we're gonna have to move up further. But now we have a little downtime, so I can try to find 
a good weapon and unfortunately for me there aren't many weapons lying around. But I managed to find two Type 95, so I'm gonna pick one up and I'm gonna restock on some ammo. The Kerrigan, Kerrigan 53 it's called, has served me well up to this point, but now I'm gonna leave it behind and... Right, here's the checkpoint. This card. You saw that little transition? Because I died immediately after I stuck my head out, because now the jeeps have arrived. And this is the really empowering mechanic of this level because when you're in a jeep just as in the beginning of this mission a jeep can take a really big beating without exploding try to get in jeeps on the right side because there are more jeeps arriving there and also during this animation where you take over the jeep and you're fighting a driver and if you haven't shot the guy on the back, you're fighting him as well. In my experience, you're invisible during that... Not invisible, invincible. They will be unable to kill you during that animation. Because I've been shot quite a lot. I think I... I think I was also in this... Uh, on this recording run, the one that made it into the walkthrough. Also, once again, I didn't have time to pre-watch this episode before I started narrating it, so... My memory is a little bit hazy on some parts of it. But look, right now, I have six bullets in my rifle. And now I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna waste my six last bullets and didn't even kill him. Or did I? No, I didn't. So this is a shit position to be in, I have no bullets. But now we're going over to the almighty G as soon as she goes over to the correct thing. You see, I got blasted, didn't die. And this is also another trophy in the game. Once again, a trophy tip from Wolfman to you. If you jump between six jeeps all in all, you will get the trophy hostile driver road rage whatever it's called so that is also another tip if you want to pick up a miscellaneous trophy and all you have to do here is whenever your jeep starts giving out you start seeing black smoke you start seeing flames get up close to another jeep and switch over to it just press the x button and jump over to it and they will never be able to kill you and we are advancing up the side of this train fast and this is also more proof that if you die and you have no bullets in your... If you don't have any bullets for your weapons, when you go over to a checkpoint or when you respawn at a checkpoint, the game will refill your bullets to some extent. And this was just pure luck. <laughs> because I didn't get a jeep over on the other side. But that just shows how powerful this is. Because I could just as well have died going over the side of the train. Hang on, but that was just pure desperation. And I was sitting here playing, recording this, just thinking to myself. How am I gonna get out of this mess? Because I know what's coming up. There's gonna be some grueling moments. And I don't have any bullets. And I'm eventually gonna have to abandon these jeeps and head back on the train and hopefully I just hope to myself that at least I will make it to the next checkpoint and then I can start improvising from there maybe I can jump over to a new jeep or at least take down one enemy with my fists so I won't die in the process but here comes a truck that we can jump over to and we're gonna take down these guys since I don't have any bullets I'm gonna have to resort to punching them and pulling them off and now we get some refills so I'm gonna jump up here and pick up some ammo for my type 95 and immediately abandon this and jump over to another almighty jeep and there we have it backseat driver is what it's called <laughs> punny name but anyway we Continue onwards up towards the side, up on the side of this train. And here comes our next stop, and 
that latching on to or at least spawning in this uh, big truck with the turret is a checkpoint because I died the very second I latched onto it with my rope because we're gonna need that to take out an ultra hit so I know there is a checkpoint here you're gonna see a little weird transition and suddenly I have two bullets in my desert eagle so I know that is a checkpoint uh, the game spawns you in on top of the train, but you can just jump over to a jeep and go over to this turret again. But here comes a quite a tricky checkpoint. This is very short, there are gonna be a bunch of enemies jumping over to that train car, and there is an ultra heavy in that... that uh, train car that will start firing at now with the wooden sides. Because there are enemies on card behind it and the card in front of it and then comes the ultra head. There is a card containing a propane tank and I managed to squeeze off a lucky shot and uh, blow it up. So that was really lucky for me. It took me quite a few tries because you can die quite quickly but the very second you get that propane tank and kill the ultra heavy you reach yet another checkpoint. That is a really bomb. short checkpoint, by the way. <laughs> I think that's the shortest checkpoint in this entire game. And all that up. remains now, basically, the entire rest of this train is <laughs> completely devoid of enemies. So we, all we have to do now is we're gonna try to get up to uh, the front of it. You coming? Again? The engine. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for a brain fart? <laughs> well, we're going up to the engine and realize that it's welded shut. So, in order to buy some time, we are gonna try to flip a switch in the rail on the railroad. So, because this train is heading for that random city in India where we started the game, and it's loaded with a no. giant bomb no, no, no. because oh, Asav well, wants to start Shit. a full-scale riot hey. and civil Roof war hatch. in the city and this is gonna be the flame that starts the entire bushfire so to speak very clumsily of me right there um, I apologize Come on. but we realize that the hatch is well and shut and luckily for us, there is a jeep coming by, just when we need one. The jeep ex machina. So once again, we take over one of these and we go into another high octane chase. Because Nadine is gonna try to fend off the enemies while we head for the switch. And this is just like the beginning of the game. Uh, the beginning of the level, was what I was gonna say. All you need to do is keep your speed up, try not to bump into too many trees and rocks on the way, and uh, run as many motorcycles as you can Sam. off the road. Hey, and Sam once Where again shows up to join the party. And the game is hey. almost I'm over fresh. at this point. There are only the two, I think there are only two little instances left, or maybe there is even just one. Not quite sure. Whatever you do, don't drive into that rock. I don't know if you can fail this if you take too long because the train is heading our way. And it's coming here quite fast. But I did this first try I am, and I am absolutely Sam! confident that uh, you will as well. Back on the train. We have to so we move over to this switch and we start pushing it. And of course some bad guys decide to join the party and mess up everything. And since I have a bunch of grenades, I'm gonna throw one in. There is a propane tank over there, so we blow up the grenade, blow up the propane tank, and I get an amazing headshot through smoke. I let the enemies know what it feels like when someone hits you with perfect aiming, even though they can't see. But very last second, I turn the switch, and then we can head back to our jeep and head for the final fight with Asav. And you remember in um, was it chapter five? We ran into Asav the first time. 
Yes? Yes, was. Okay. The fight we had with him there is very the similar the to board? the one we're gonna Can't have right now. Bridges. And you're gonna have oh, checkpoints up the ass. Well, shit. So this is more or less just... Just don't give up. The second part of this fight can be a little bit hard. Remember I said earlier, he has an auto-block system. So as long as you're in front of him, you cannot hit him. He'll, he'll block every time you try to punch him as long as he's facing you. The first part of this is very easy. You and Nadine tag team and kick his ass. You go into a little cutscene. Go into the second part. It becomes a little bit harder. I was playing very sloppy. Press circle in uh, in uh, with his movements. Only press it once per punch, so he doesn't hit you. If you slam it, or if you start mashing it, he will hit you. But there goes the second part of the fight. Another checkpoint. This is the only hard part. We have to face him alone. All you have to do is press circle between one and five times. When you get into one combo Double with him, fight. the very first time you start hitting him, you will go into this animation. We start slamming the triangle button, and Nadine decides to rejoin your little party. And that is the absolute hardest part of this uh, off the boss fight. Because in all the other parts, including the last part coming up right now, you're gonna have Nadine with you, and you're gonna tag team like two beasts. So we get, <laughs> we decide to peel off the side of this train cart, and all you need to do now is latch onto that little pole or wherever it is, jump down on the south, and we fall into where the bomb is. And once again, we have another checkpoint, and now you can just smash the square button. And this is, I think this is the final part of the fight. And all you have to do here is just mash square, down he goes, goes into another little monologue. Bad guys are always monologuing. My cleansing would have been beautiful! Why didn't you just die? We see another little cutscene, and I think... Ah, you have to beat him up one last time. One last punch for the team. So... Tag team again, and down he goes. He gets stuck beneath the bomb, and he has one last monologue, and now we're gonna jump off the train. It's not an Uncharted game unless you're running away from something at the end. So, all you have to do here is run, jump between the cards, don't fall in between them, and then we're gonna do one last jump, run for this card once again, Uncharted 2, remember anyone? Latch on to that, and you have beaten Uncharted The Lost Legacy of Crushing Difficulty. I congratulate you, I hope this walkthrough was helpful, and if you didn't watch it to get help, I hope at least that you enjoyed it, and I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again in my next walkthrough. So until next time, this is The Wolfman, signing off.